Amen. Anybody have a song or a testimony tonight? Yes, sir. Brother Doe. Amen. Amen. Anybody else have anything? I do thank him for all that he does for me. I, I'm thankful that, uh, you know, we went to that hospital room yesterday to talk to Bernard, and uh, it's a comfortable feeling when you know somebody's saved. It's, it's easy to talk to them when, when they know, but when you go in that room and they're, you don't know if they're saved or if you know they're lost, that's an uneasy feeling because uh, you might be the last person to get a talk to them in between them and their eternity. But I, I'm thankful that uh, that Menard has made his uh, he's made it his dedication to the Lord and he's put his trust in Him, and uh, we don't have to worry about him. But there's others that if they was in his spot, that might be amongst us on Sunday morning, uh, might be amongst us now. You know, I wouldn't know. There, there would be no guarantee in my mind. So uh, I just pr my prayer for our church is that I can, any person that is in this church that I could know. That they that I know that they're going, you know, uh, it's between them and the Lord. But I I'd like to, you know, I I like uh, going in. Somebody say I know the Lord and I'm saved, but not just saying it, but living it too. And I, I thank God for the life that some some others have lived before us that we can see an example. I faced a mountain I've never faced before. That's why I'm calling on you, Lord. I know it's been a while, but Lord, please hear my prayer. I need you, Lord, like I never had before. Sometimes it takes a mountain Sometimes a troubled scene Sometimes it takes a desert To get a hold of me Oh, your love is so much stronger. Whatever troubles me, sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Forgive me, Jesus, thought I could control whatever life would throw my way. But this, I will admit, has brought me to my knees. I need you now, and I'm not ashamed to say, Oh, sometimes. 
sometimes it takes a mountain. Sometimes trouble seems. Sometimes it takes a desert to get a hold of me. Oh, your love is so much stronger than whatever troubles me. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and believe. Sometimes it takes a mountain to trust you and I hate when the Lord has to bring somebody to their knees for them to realize, hey, they're living in a way that uh, that they ain't supposed to. But you know what? It sometimes it takes that. Sometimes it takes cancer. Sometimes it takes death in the family. And you know what? It'd be worth it every time uh, to see somebody uh, uh, get saved. And especially, I mean, it, it's worth it. Life or death. Hey, if you're if you're saved, hey, you don't have to worry about the hereafter. I don't want to see nobody go through nothing, but I, you know what? I want to see lost souls saved because that's a reassuring faith, and that's the only thing that matters in between here and eternity. If you got your Bibles, be turning to First uh, Thessalonians chapter number uh, five. There, First Thessalonians chapter number five. If you want to, after you find that place, you can be finding First uh, Samuel chapter number seventeen. I want to just read a, about three or four, maybe five verses here in 1 Thessalonians and we'll get into the message over there in uh, 1 Samuel chapter number 17. But When you find your place there in Thessalonians, if you'll stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to start reading about verse number 16. Chapter or chapter number five there, First Thessalonians, and the Bible says, "Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good." Brother Tommy, you pray for us. Amen. Thank you, Brother Tommy. You can be seated. Like I said, be finding your place in 1 Samuel chapter number 17 there. But while you're turning there, I, uh, I want you to notice or uh, remember here verse number 21 in 1 Thessalonians. The Bible says, Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. And uh, prove all things there. It, it, it says uh, what it means is to make sure that what you believe lines up with the truth. Uh, prove all things. Uh, and I'll say it like this, if what you believe, if you study it out in the Word of God, 
And, and what uh, if you study it out and you pray and seek into God, what you believe, you'll prove it every time. That's what it's saying. Prove that. Uh, uh, prove all things. And uh, can I say to you, uh, as a, a younger Christian, I believe that I could uh, lose my uh, uh, my salvation. Uh, I would. I didn't believe in eternal security, and uh, I, I grew up that way. And uh, I didn't uh, know a lot uh, about uh, anything uh, past, uh, you know, salvation. Uh, but uh, as I got older, I began to study in the Word of God, and I, and, uh, and uh, study what uh, it actually said about salvation, what it said about the uh, end times, about the rapture of the church, and so on and so forth. And I began to realize the things that I was that I believed, uh, and the things that I thought was not lining up with the Bible. And, uh, and I sought after the Lord, and I said, Lord, I've grown up believing I could lose my salvation. I, I've grown up uh, like this, but it looks like your word is telling me something else. And I, and I just put my head on this Bible, and I prayed, and I studied for weeks, and finally it come to me, Jacob, it couldn't be eternal life if you could lose it. It wouldn't be very eternal. And the Lord settled me on it, and you know what? It proved out what I thought I believed wasn't true. And what, I, and what I thought, uh, uh, the Word of God actually told me different. And uh, so what he's saying is prove all things. And, uh, but it goes on, it says, hold fast that which is good. Uh, what that means is cling on to the good things of life, to the good things of the Bible, to the good things, the righteous things that God has laid forth uh, uh, in front of us. If we're ever in a time where they're trying to take liberties away from us left and right, and uh, I, I just remember back over there uh, a, a few years back uh, when the, the, the liberties of the free country, they got taken away just a little bit, if you'll think back, about three years. Uh, and you better, so in this time, we better cling to that which is good. Hold on to it. And, uh, and we're living in a world, and it's uh, ever going uh, to, the, uh, to the left side there. It's going wild and wicked, and, uh, and it's going crazy. But we better, as Christians, hold on to that which is good. And uh, because it, all it takes is one generation to lose it all. Ronald Reagan said that, fr uh, that freedom is just one generation away from being gone. That's what he said. Uh, all it takes is one generation... Uh, and, and I'll take a step further. It takes one generation not going to church that no generations ever go back to church. And uh, it, it just takes one generation. And I'm glad that there's still some that's hold on uh, uh, to the will of God that we meet in church. Uh, there is some that still uh, held on to the good things. Hey, uh, 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 they say that we're a backwards people and that we're, uh, uh, that we're uh, uh, narrow-minded and stuff. And uh, I've been called narrow-minded. And, uh, and I told them, I said, I'm, I thank you for calling me narrow-minded because uh, the Bible says straight is the way narrow the gate. Uh, exactly. I want to be narrow-minded if it comes to that. Uh, uh, that lets me know that I'm living it right when people start calling me that, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but it says, hold fast that which is good. And I begin to think about somebody in the Bible that we could look at uh, that held on to the good things of God. And I, I thought about a man named David. Uh, and he was a little boy here in chapter number 17 of 1 Samuel. And this is a familiar scripture to us all. Uh, but let's start reading in about verse number 22. In se chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, and verse number 22 said, And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army, and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine uh, of Gath, uh, Goliath by name, out of the armies of Philistine, uh, out of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is, the, is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine, and, and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is the, the uncircumcised Philistine? And that he should defy the armies of the living God. 
And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Elab, uh, his eldest brother, heard when he uh, spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou might see us the, the battle, or to see the battle. And David said, what have, uh, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? But if you uh, flip back to verse number 8 through 10 there, uh, you will find uh, the story uh, uh, where uh, David's talking about uh, that Goliath ta- uh, is uh, defying the Lord. In verse number 8, he said, And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel, this is Goliath, uh, unto them, uh, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am, I, am not I a Philistine, and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for whom, for you, and let him come down to me. If he be able to, uh, to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. So we find here that, uh, that Goliath, uh, he's defied the armies of God, uh, and he's defying uh, the Lord of heaven. Uh, and he's defying Saul there and, and defying all the things. And, uh, but in verse 29, we find uh, uh, that David over there, he said, uh, uh, that he says, and what have I done, or what have I now done, is there not a cause? In verse 29, we find out David has decided in his heart that he's going to stand and hold fast to the things which are good that's come to him. Uh, now David, uh, take in mind, he's a little shepherd boy uh, up there, and, uh, and uh, he's a little shepherd boy. He's never seen actual war. Uh, he's never uh, uh, seen anything. Uh, he has fought. You'll find later on he killed uh, uh, the lion there and, uh, uh, and killed some other things. And he tells uh, Paul or Saul there uh, that, uh, that, he, that, he can, uh, that if he killed them, he can kill this uh, 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 Goliath too. But in verse 29, we find uh, that David says uh, uh, to his brother there, is there not a cause? He said, is there not something worth fighting this Philistine? Go, he said, is there not something worth going down there and killing this Philistine? Uh, killing Goliath, uh, uh, and because if it, it, no, the longer that Goliath lived, the longer and, and the more drawn out this battle was going to be. And Goliath had some brothers, you'll find out. And, and, but if they, but I believe Goliath probably one, probably the biggest one of them, if I had to guess. Uh, uh, you know why? I ever uh, uh, seen the, uh, the school kids out on the, the playground? Uh, usually, uh, the, everybody's huddled around the biggest bully. You know, the, the biggest, baddest bully. I believe Goliath was the biggest one of them, and uh, that's why he was out on the front lines, running his mouth and uh, and defying uh, uh, the uh, the people of God. And, uh, but to, he says, this heathen giant wants to take our lives. Uh, he wants to defy our God. And is there not a cause to go and take his life? Is there not a cause to stand up against him and uh, take the fight to him? And can I, if I can tonight, church, I want to preach on the thought, won't you stand? Won't you stand? And uh, uh, David knows uh, that the God of Israel is a holy God. He knows that, uh, that he's the Jehovah God. Uh, he knows that, uh, that he has given his people uh, this land, uh, uh, and he knows that, he is, uh, that he's brought God's people thus far, and, and he knows in his heart that if I go down, uh, he's going to make a way for me to defeat this giant. He's, uh, uh, and he says, uh, but I must stand up, and hold fast to that which is good. He said, I, want, I must stand against him. And uh, can I say to you, these other men uh, that were around him, his brothers included of David, they were cowards. They got scared because of Goliath's size. They got scared because of how big Goliath was. They seen what he could do in battle. Uh, no doubt that uh, uh, you'll find uh, uh, Saul says that, uh, uh, that, he, uh, that he's been in war since his youth, uh, 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 since he was just little, and, uh, and David, uh, uh, just a shepherd boy. And, uh, but uh, uh, Goliath is no doubt uh, as, uh, you, the best thing that you could think of as a warrior. I mean, he could kill 
Uh, for one man, uh, for what we could kill one man, he could kill a hundred. I mean, I'm telling you, he's about 13 foot tall. Uh, the best uh, that we can, uh, uh, the different measurements give uh, different uh, sizes. Uh, but uh, one uh, author, uh, author says he was about 13, one says he was 9 or 10. But needless to say, uh, he was bigger than any man that's living on this earth. And, uh, but can I say to you, we are facing giants today. Just the same, uh, uh, and they not, might not be physical giants uh, uh, like Goliath was, but we've got giants on every front. And uh, our country uh, is in a place right now uh, that, uh, and we're facing giants in our personal lives. And, uh, but uh, can I say to you, churches, they're not something worth standing for. There's a couple of things I I'd like to show you that I think are worth standing for, and then I'll, I'll try my best to get out of the way. But we must stand for the things that are right that God has given us. Every good thing that we have. Uh, over there he says, hold fast uh, to that which is good. And I'll tell you that these are a few things that I believe to be good. Now, first of all, I believe that we should stand up against these giants for our King James Version Bible. Now, the devil and the, these giants that we're facing has been wanting rid of this King James Bible for a long time. They've been, uh, and, and you know what? Uh, at first, they just wanted rid of it. They wanted to get rid of it. But you know what? Slowly but surely, they've infiltrated uh, churches with new versions. You know what the best way to do uh, to fight somebody is not to go on the offensive. Uh, not to go and, and just uh, and, and to try to rip every Bible out of everybody's hand. The best way the devil knows how to do is to take that Bible, change it, take out verses, uh, and change it to mean different things and then slip it into your hands so you don't know what's the truth and what's wrong. In 1611, uh, King James uh, authorized this version uh, to be uh, translated for English-speaking people. Now that you say, Jacob, what about the people that don't speak English? Well, there's a, uh, there's a Bible for them too, but if for English-speaking people, this King James Bible is where it's at. And uh, you look at the NIV, and uh, it's been proved that there is so, uh, uh, so many words and so many verses been left out of it. How can it be a Bible? And it, they say, well, Jacob, it says the same exact thing. Well, if they leave verses out, no, it don't. If they change words out of it, no, it, it ain't the same. It's different. You say, Jacob, why are you preaching on which version it is? They're all the Bible. No, they're not. It's a good thing that, we, uh, that God laid aside this Bible. And I could go in depth and uh, go down the road, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll put it in short to you. This Bible comes from a manuscript called the Texas Receptus. And, and you know where you find uh, that Texas Rece uh, Receptus uh, uh, manuscript come from? It come from Antioch. You know what Antioch was? The first church, one of the first churches. You find these, the NIV and some of these others come from the Alexandrian manuscript. You know where they come from? Egypt. You know what the world is? Egypt. You know, uh, I, I believe, uh, 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 you know, just for my own, uh, uh, my own personal use, I'll stick with where the church was versus where the world is. And uh, that's as far as I'll go. But we are to hold fast to this Bible because uh, this world would love to see this Bible uh, diluted and uh, taken away from us so that we wouldn't know what God has to say about things. You know what's so sad? I was watching a news interview, uh, and this was a, a, a very predominant uh, uh, news anchor woman, uh, and she, uh, she was on there, and uh, she was talking about the, the King James Bible and, or just the Bible in general, and, she said, I don't care what your Bible says. I don't, don't tell me what your Bible says. She said, I don't want to hear about the Bible. And this is on national television. They don't care. They're not afraid to speak up. They're not afraid to stand for what they believe in. So church, we are to stand up for what we believe in. And I'm telling you, we are to stand for this Bible. We are to stand for the truths of it. Hey, the, uh, over there it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Hey, this Bible right here is God. Hey, this is how we know who He is. This is how we form a relationship with Him. Uh, you want to know what God thinks about something? Look at the Bible. It'll tell you what He thinks about it. You want to know how God feels about you? Look at the Bible. For God so loved the world. Hey, you're right there in that. God uh, left everything that He can in this King James Blessed Bible that we get to have. And we are to stand against the world. Uh, and we are to stand up against these giants for our Bible. I believe that's one good thing that we should stand up for, that we should hold fast to. But second of all, we should stand up against these giants for our local church. 
Now, I, now I, you remember, I, as I said a, a few minutes ago, about three years ago, what they do? Shut down the churches. Shut down everything. They, uh, they told us not to go and assemble together. But I'm here to tell you, this is what the Bible said about assembling together. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as the manner uh, of some is. Uh, but the... Uh, uh, I've lost it there, uh, but uh, uh, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And so much more, get together. Hey, uh, we better, uh, we got to stand for our church. We got to stand uh, 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 for these uh, uh, for these four walls. They say, Jacob, the church is uh, uh, is the people, and I'll say that the church is a people. But this church, this uh, the building, is a special place set aside. For God's people. Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, this place, and me and mom was talking about this uh, just earlier this week. Church is where I get my refuge from the storms outside. Hey, I need Wednesday night. You know why? Because between Sunday night and Monday and Tuesday, you know what? Sometimes it's a rough week. Everybody hates Mondays. Uh, everybody hates Monday. You know why? Because a lot of stuff happens on Mondays. But you know what? I look forward to Wednesday night because I know I'll get some refuge from the storm. I know I'll get some uh, pick me up. Hey, I love Wednesday night service. A lot of people don't come to Wednesday night service, but it's some of the best services that we ever have. And, and everybody looks for that big uh, uh, that big move of God on Sunday morning. You know what? God can make, hey, we put him in a box sometimes. God moved just as much on Wednesday night as he will on Sunday morning. God will, uh, just as much as we want a God, He'll give us. But we are to stand up for our church. Uh, this, uh, the world out here, you know what they do? They love to see these doors shut out here and us not to come back. You know what? And it seems like, it seems like more and more people are uninter uninterested and uncaring whether it's not to go to church. And I'm not just talking about lost people. I'm talking about the people that claim to be saved. They could care less about coming to church. I, I, I think it, something is wrong with you if you claim to be saved and you say there's no need to go to church. Amen, right there goes to say, hey, there's something wrong with you if you don't want to be with God's people at His uh, uh, set-aside church. Well, I, and I'm not saying that you uh, are a lost person if you can't make it to church. I don't mean that. I know people got to work. I know people got other things. I uh, just like our brother Bernard, he's sick in the hospital. He ain't able to come out uh, uh, the body. But if you're an able-bodied person and uh, you uh, are able to come, I believe you are to want to be. And I, I've said it like this before, and I'll say it again. Hey, I don't have to go to church to be saved, but I should. Because I don't have to go home to be married, but it helps. It helps. You know why? Because there's a relationship there. There's a bond formed when I'm at home with Holly and the baby. And you know what? There's a bond formed amongst God's people and against God when you get together and you gather yourselves at church. There's something special about it. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. But third of all, we should stand up against these giants for our country. Hey, remember what I said? America is a country that on the back of them dollar bills it says, In God we trust. There's people that's infiltrating our country right now that desires God to be wrote off everything. And it saddens me because once our country was one of the, it was one of the greatest countries in the world. And you know what? It was one of the most mission-minded countries. You know what? We used to send, uh, I mean, the most missionaries ever out to witness to lost people. You know what? It don't happen as much anymore. The funding's gone. People are uninterested, uncaring. Because... These giants are fighting against us for our church or for our country. You know what? Uh, uh, there's people in power right now that they claim to hate God. That's sad to say. You know what? If they hate God, they hate you because you say that you love God. They hate me because I, I, I say that I love God. And, and, uh, uh, and you know what? I'll just go ahead and say it. They're not for our country. They're not. If they don't love God, they're not truly for this country. You know what they're for? They're for some wicked, uh, uh, for Satan's all they're for. Hey, if you ain't a, for God, you're against him. And, uh, and I'll say, uh, and, uh, the, and I believe that God allowed America to come uh, uh, because there was some people that wanted religious liberty to be able to serve him in truth 
and, and to be able to be separated. And you know what? It's got all turned around. I, I was uh, listening uh, uh, to George Washington's uh, inauguration. I wasn't listening to it, but reading a, a story about uh, when it happened. He got inaugurated, and I believe it was on a, maybe a Sunday or something. But, but anyways, he got inaugurated, and after it, uh, they, he said, well, let's go to church. It's George Washington, our first president. It's unbelievable how the tides have turned in just, uh, just a few hundred years. Uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and I'm not claiming that, that either side, you know what, either side of this country, they uh, uh, Republican, Democrat, Independent, there is none of them for God. Can I say to you, there is none of them, very few. And you know why? Because uh, anybody that stands up for God and that is right, they're not going to make it in these kind of politics. You know why? Because, uh, uh, because uh, that is not popularized standing for God and standing for that which is right. But we are to stand up against these giants for our country. I, I, it would be easy just to lay down and say the battle is not worth it. You know what? I, I've heard a lot, uh, and you'll hear it a lot. You're fighting a losing battle. You're fighting a losing battle. Uh, this country is lost. They're not going to accept God back. Hey, I, I, don't, uh, I don't put God in a box like that. Uh, you know what? I, in Revelation, I don't read nowhere about uh, America being over there. But you know what? I don't know when that time will be. I would like to see another great move of God in our country. I'd like to see a revival sweep through our land. Not just some man-made uh, emotionalism, uh, 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 nothing that, that ain't a part of God. I'm talking about a true turn of God, a true revival. And you know what? It's going to take people like me and you standing up for our country and standing up for God and holding uh, to the good things. Hey, uh, uh, you know what, uh, uh, people that, uh, that are for God, they stand up for good things. And we stand up for good things, but our country doesn't want that. They want us to, to be infiltrated with wickedness and evilness. But we should still stand up. You know what, just as hopeless as David was against that giant, that's the way we feel sometimes against our own country, trying to stand up for God. But you know what, David said, is there not a cause? And you know what? Is there not a cause, church, uh, that there's lost people yet in our country? There's lost people yet in this very own county right here. Is there not lost people that might be living right next door? You never know. And, and don't say when the preacher moves over here in the next few weeks, uh, I ain't talking about him. I promise you I'm saved. Hey, it's all right. Lighten up, church. Yeah, everybody's looking with a stone face. Hey, I, 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 I say these things uh, to, uh, to, uh, to get us rallied up together. You know what? Uh, in battle, uh, on a football field, there'll be, a, there'll be somebody, get, uh, they'll get in there and they'll, they'll give a good speech and a good pep talk. You know what? A church needs it every once in a while. Sometimes we feel so beaten and battered by the, uh, uh, by the storm, by the battle, and by the, uh, you know what, uh, uh, I, I've seen uh, so many times on a football field, they'll come out all after the first half, and uh, they'll be beaten down, and they'll be uh, losing by so many points, and the coach will say, it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Is there not a cause? Can I say to you, it's not over yet, church. Until God comes in glory and he calls his church home, that's when it's finished for us. Uh, that's when uh, our work is over. But until that time, is there not a cause that we should stand for our country? But last of all, you know what? We should stand up against these giants for our Lord Jesus Christ. I think about what he's done for us. And I could see David over there, and he said, what have I, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And uh, I could just see David, and it don't say that he said this, but I could see him, and he'd say, now, brother, you not remember what, they told, what, uh, what we read about what God did for Moses at the Red Sea? That was a giant, Moses' faith. He was uh, up against the Pharaoh of Egypt. He was up against... Uh, 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 the Red Sea, he could not move that Red Sea, but you know what, we read, and I, we read that uh, Moses, uh, uh, that God uh, parted the seas and they walked over. You know what, God did that for Moses. We can defeat this giant. You know, I can see him say, uh, uh, you know what, uh, uh, he said, yeah, we're facing a giant, but uh, don't you remember what he did for Joshua? When Joshua went into the land, every battle that Joshua fought, he won. Just about. Everybody, uh, you read about Joshua. because you, That's the same God that we're serving. David said, we can do this. Is there not a cause to fight this giant? But the Bible says over in Philippians 1 and 27, only let your conversation be as set 
uh, becometh the gospel of Christ, that, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That we should strive together for the faith of the gospel. And can I say to you, church, we are to stand up for the Lord Jesus. Hey, uh, uh, we might be facing some giants right now in our church, and, and, I, and I'm... I, I, and I wonder and I pray when, I, when I'm thinking about it, and I, I search these pews when I'm praying, and I think, Lord, they're going through some tough times. Bernard over there, he's facing some tough times. Clifton, he's facing some giants. I, 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 know, I, I couldn't point it, but people are going through some giants right now. But is there not a cause, church? Is there not something worth standing for? Hey, when you don't feel like standing for nothing, stand for Jesus. I, 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 hey, can I say to you, he stood for you that day on that cross. He, as he hung there on that cross. But uh, even before, you know what gets me so tickled to death about, the, uh, about the, the crucifixion of Jesus? I hate that he had to die, but I'm so grateful he did. But not even uh, him on the cross. Do you remember over there uh, uh, when, it, when he went so far and they had to have somebody help him? But I, I can see Jesus. He tries best, beaten. And without any, uh, uh, and beaten, and, and so bloodied up, and without any strength to go on. But he's still trying to get that cross up the hill for me or you. And I could hear him say in his mind, is there not a cause? Is there not a people that need a Savior? And that ought to make you think, is there not a cause yet for Jesus Christ? Just think about it, Brother Joe. That old cross. Brother, I can just see Jesus. Just say, I'm going to go another step for, my, for Joe. I'm going to go a step for Kim. I'm going to go a step for Tommy. I'm going to go a step for every person. Every person that's in here, if I can just make it another step, I'm going to go all the way for them. He say, is there not a cause? Is it not worth it to go and die? Hey, I might, he said, I'll have to give my life up. I'll have to give up the ghost. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to die and, uh, and go down to paradise. But is there not a cause? And you think about that. When you get down and out and you feel like the battle's done defeated around you, you feel like, well, what's it even worth it? I know I'm not the only one that's ever said, what's, it, what's the use? What's the use? I know I'm not the one, only one. What's the use of praying for this? It's all already lost. Can I say to you, Jesus could have said, what's the use? I've done been beat to death. He, he could have given it up right there, but he said, no. Is there not a cause? And he climbed up that hill. And you know what, uh, that hill, uh, I, I did some studying on it, it's uh, about three football fields long that he carried that cross. And you know how heavy that cross was? It was over 100 pounds heavy. And he carried it for me and you. He'd say, is there not a cause? And church tonight, we all look like we've been battled and beaten by the storm. By the giant. We feel, uh, hey, uh, uh, the giant's telling us, uh, he's saying, you're defeated. Hey, I, I'm better than you. I'm a better, uh, uh, I'm stronger than you. I'm going to kill you if you step out on this battlefield one more. But can I say to you, step out on that battlefield. Grab up your sling. And, and you know what? God of heaven will take a little bitty rock and throw it. And you can, all you got to do is uh, just throw it. And God will do the rest. But I read there in that Bible, when he throws that, when he slings that stone, it hits him in the forehead, and you know what? He falls forward. That don't work. That ain't, uh, that ain't, uh, uh, that ain't right. When you throw and hit me right here, I'm going to fall backwards. I, I always heard it like this. When David threw that stone, hit him, and it sunk in his forehead, God slapped that giant over the back of the head. Can I say to you, I don't know. I, that's just a funny there. But I don't know exactly uh, uh, how. I, 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 the Bible doesn't say nothing more than he hit him on the forehead and he fell for, face forward. Can I say to you, all you got to do is put that little rock in your sling and go out and step on that battle. The giant's saying, you're done defeated. The giant's saying, what's the use? I'm saying to you, won't you stand for Jesus? Won't you stand, church? Won't you stand? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Father, I thank you and praise you for another day of life, God. Lord, I ask you, God, to help us, Lord, to stand for you. Stand for that which is, uh, 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 which is good. Stand uh, and hold on to the things uh, of God. Lord, I beg of you tonight, Lord, help us, God. We're facing giants, Lord, that we've never faced before. Each one in here has a giant waiting on them outside these doors, but I'm glad from the refuge. Help us, Lord, to pick up, Lord, our slings, 
step out, go face a giant, and tell that giant, say, Lord, what's the use? But I, that giant will say, what's the use? But can I say to you, I'm glad, God, that all we have to do is say, it's worth standing for you. It's worth standing for you. I love you, God, and I thank you for loving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed.